My name's Ellie. I'm an English teacher, um, although I'm Spanish or Catalan, and I work at the Foreign Language Department of Institute Uber de Catalunya here in Barcelona. Um, so, as a as a language educator, um, I'm trying to yes, as a language educator, our primary goal is for our learners to be able to use new language for uh, to communicate effectively. But before they're able to do so, our learners will carry out a series of tasks in Moodle oriented to the exploration of language use, and this usually starts with us setting a meaningful context that should make language meaningful, new language meaningful, followed by some language work to raise linguistic awareness and facilitate consolidation. So uh, this, is, this all happens before our learners are actually able to use any new language. Now, to do so, we have made extensive use of Moodle quiz, not only as a tool for assessment, but as the backbone of our learning self-paced sequences and to enhance uh, students' uh, active engagement with the materials. We, are, uh, we have created a lot of material on Genially, which we then embed uh, in our quizzes using HTML. Now, um, Let's see how that works in practice in a little learning sequence. Now, we know that um, providing, oops, providing uh, contextualized instances of the target language is key to language acquisition. So in our quiz, which is called it Travel Stories, we're opening the sequence with an invitation to travel. So, what we've done, we've adapted a template from Genially, and we are inviting our learners to explore six holiday um, destinations, choose one, and share it in a class forum. So, for example, if we chose to go to Kenya, we could go backpacking in Kenya. Now, backpacking is a word that learners at this level will not know, they, they will not be familiar with this word. So we're offering them with a hotspot, we're offering them some indications and some visual support. Now, at this level, we're just um, planting the seeds. We're uh, starting a process of noticing and helping raise awareness of certain things that we will analyze in the rest of the sequence. Now, so far, we've set a realistic learning scenario where our learners interact with content, not so much as language learners, but as language users. They're doing what they would do in their real lives if they were looking for a holiday destination, and that's the kind of engagement we're looking for. As for interactive elements, we're using them for engagement and also to draw attention to uh, these linguistic items that we will analyze later, as I said. So we're starting the process of raising awareness now. So far, we've exposed learners to new comprehensible language, but we know that with adult learners, exposure to language does not lead to language acquisition right away. But for learning to take place, we need to um, or there needs to be some friction, a certain level of relative difficulty. And in this quiz, we're going to create this friction with an invitation to remember. We're going to invite learners to remember what they've just done. So this is a task two in, um, in our quiz. And we're asking, we're mm, sort of appealing to learners' visual memory of the backpack, if you remember, and prompting them to fill in the gaps with these words that we have created awareness of before. They would have noticed this in their interactions with content. If we take a second look at this activity, we know that we can also foster cognitive engagement uh, with our use of gap text. Now, when we create gap text on Moodle quiz, we are starting um, 
like in this example, we're giving learners the experience of a certain language pattern before we give them the rule. So before we give them structured knowledge, um, learners have already had an experience of it. And finally, research shows that uh, our brain absorbs information better or best when multiple senses are being targeted during the process, during the learning process. So in this little lesson on shopping, we have created very quickly an interactive image where uh, learners can identify items and people related to a shopping situation th so they can see the items and when they click on the hotspots, they can read the word and they can listen to the word. Now, in the activity immediately below, they will go through the same process reverse. They listen to the word and they'll write the word. So we know, we, we providing this multi-sensory input, we're helping learners process information more efficiently. Now, yes, learners do need uh, opportunities to develop and automate new language. And uh, this is especially true when it comes to lexical content. Now, we can implement uh, vocabulary retention strategies to take all this new, uh, new words from short to long-term memory. And these strategies involve uh, learners physically doing things with words. So uh, things like matching items or ranking them, sorting them out into different categories, choosing them, making them personal. Now, this is established practice in the language classroom, in the real physical language classroom, but uh, in our quiz, we, have Im we are going to invite our learners to play actively with language with, um, with genially draggable items. Now, we don't have an internet connection here, so I can't show you, but here our learners, uh, we've asked them to match verbs and nouns to make phrases that are typically used when you talk about uh, traveling. And so that's what they would be doing. Now, to reinforce all this, to consolidate all this knowledge, meow, I don't know what's going on, yes. In the next activity, we'll take exactly the same content and now we'll ask learners to sort these phrases out according to their personal preferences when they travel. So, uh, for example, some people never read a guidebook when they travel and some people do it uh, during the trip, some people do it before the trip, I don't know about you. Now, um, so they would do this and when they finish to finish the cycle, to close the cycle, we'll ask learners to make a recording just for self-practice of this. We've embedded a H5P um, audio recorder. And basically, this integration of Genially into Moodle, uh, we think, introduces an extra level of sensory engagement, which works together with Moodle Quiz uh, ability to guide learners through the process and will help promote attentional processing and improve recall of new language. And that's it. Ah, thank you for your attention. Uh, if you have any questions, only easy questions, please. I'm just a teacher, okay? I used to have that line, I'm just a teacher. There's no such thing as just a teacher. This, we wouldn't be here if it weren't for teachers, so just making that point. Uh, okay, we have um, a, a couple of minutes for questions if you'd like, but can you make sure you, you wait till the mic arrives? Hi. Hi. I would like to know if these audio recordings are evaluated by some teacher or is it really just for you? Um, once you answer through the mic. Yeah. Uh, would you mind uh, repeating the question? Just, I didn't hear it very well. Okay. Um, you did show some audio recorder. Is it for you only, or is there some teacher who evaluates it? Uh, the audio recorder was, um, we use it in so many different ways. This is H5P, uh, but in these sequences, which are self-based, we use them for self-practice. So they can listen to themselves, and that's it. You, you could send it to your instructor if you wanted, but 
that's not the idea. The idea is that you are doing something actively with that content and in a, in a language, is, it's also very convenient to have it, um, to have these recordings, but just for self-practice. Um, I've just started learning a language, so that was really, really interesting. Um, I wanted to ask, are there any accessibility issues with some of the... Um, yeah, because I saw some kind of drag and drop and hotspots. Yeah, in terms of accessibility, I know that the G that Genially people are working on this, but um, I'm not sure it would be very accessible. Okay, thank you. Okay, we have time for one more. Yep, one more behind you. There you go, Matt. One last question, thank you. It's more of a technical question. Um, you said that at the end that you were um, putting a H5P uh, recorder inside of Genially. So do you have, is that? Do you want to? It's, it's a quiz. Oh, so it's within Moodle. And it's everything I've shown you is on Moodle. So what we do is we create this interactive content on Genially, yeah, yeah. and then we take the, the HTML and we embed it on anywhere in Moodle. In my case, I do it in, in quizzes. So in the sequence I've shown you, you had like uh, HTML for Genially and HTML for H5P recorder, within which is the, in the repository. Within the same, uh, okay, got yeah, it, the same activity. Yeah, all together. Okay, great, thank you.